Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 12th of December. Today we have some updates, so let's start. First we're going to start with Velika Novoselovka, with this town that located on the south uh, west from Donetsk. If you remember yesterday we discussed that the Russians started some kind of counter-offensive operation or offensive operation in this area in direction of Velika Novoselovka. Yesterday we got a lot of updates that the Russians managed to penetrate the Ukrainian defense orders without uh, real geolocation of their progress or something like this. So today I was you know, I expected for more updates and we receive more updates today. Uh, starting this morning, the Russian authorities and the Russian military experts reported that the Russian stop. They decided not to develop any offensive operation in this area and they decided to step back. So during the previous 24 hours, the Russians made another attempt. They forced the Ukrainians to step back. Uh, they've pushed Ukrainians from the first defense line. Uh, the Russians entered you know, that uh, first defense line, but uh, later they decided to step back and to return every single square meter they got over the past uh, previous offensive operation. What does it mean? The Russian military experts are saying that uh, that was some kind of recoing combat. So the Russians uh, tried to understand and analyze the Ukrainians' movements, what the Ukrainians were planning to do, uh, which uh, kind of reserves the Ukrainians were planning to use, and so on. So they just wanted some kind to make some uh, to make some kind of simulation of that attack and to understand what the Ukrainians were planning to do. This is the official position of the Ukrainian the Russian of military authorities, but I believe that uh, it wasn't like that. I believe that, um, first of all, if we take a look at deployment map at this area, we're gonna see that this area, Veliko Novoselovka, used to be under defense of uh, the uh, first tank brigade. If you remember the, this position, the main position of that tank brigade was on the north of Veliko Novoselovka. So it was some kind of important reserves that the Ukrainians were, were keeping, were planning to use if the Russians uh, would decide to start some offensive operation. But during the progress in Marinka, the Ukrainians decided to move this brigade as close as possible to Marinka, just with one purpose, to stop the Russians' progress in this area. And the Russians uh, made some kind of offensive operation, uh, but I believe that at some point of time uh, they understood that uh, there is or there was some kind of trap because the Ukrainians left their first defense line even without a shot, so they even decided not to even give a battle not to lose even a soldier. So they completely stepped back and the Russians, I believe they understood that there is some kind of trap and that the Ukrainians were expecting them. So that's why they, dis of course, of meanwhile, like if we're talking about this simulation, I believe that they managed to understand the real situation of Vel near Velika Novoselovka, but for now, the Russians decided to step back and return on their previous position without any progress, without nothing in this area. If we are talking about uh, this uh, area, if we got some updates from uh, Marinka, uh, the Russians, uh, the head of DPR, the head of Donetsk People's Republic, reported that the Russians established control for more than 70% uh, of Marinka without any geolocation or without any uh, showing the maps about the real control, just 70%. If we take a look at this map, uh, if we adjust the Russian source map, we see that Marinka is split in two parts and the Russians control, according to this map, around 50% of this town. So if we, if um, Pushilin says about 70%, so I believe that the Russians managed to move a little bit to the west and they control just the re central road and a few blocks maybe on the west side of this road. Uh, anyway, there are very heavy clashes there. It's a very difficult job for the Russians to move, and uh, so no progress, we can say, during the previous 24 hours. If we are talking about Donetsk, today, yesterday in the evening there was a very interesting statistic. Uh, the Russians reported that during the previous week, just, previous, uh, just after one week, the Ukrainians managed to kill around 80 uh, civilians in this town as a result of their artillery attack and... Uh, missile attack over this, this town. So 80 were killed 
and around 200 civilians were wounded during the Ukrainian attack just for the one week. So as you can see, the casualties are very high, the situation is very critical and the Russians do really need to find a solution how to push the Ukrainians from Daniel city. But for now we see that it's very difficult and sometimes... Uh, sometimes uh, I believe that it's even impossible. If we're talking about PSQ frontline, uh, the Ukrainians made a counter-offensive operation in this area, trying to attack the same direction from Vadiana, from the, between these two water reservoirs. They moved their um, 59th mechanized brigades, were attacking in this area, but that attack were repulsed, and the Russians reported that as a result of that attack, the Ukrainians lost around 30 soldiers and something around five armored vehicles. If we are moving to Avdeevka, there are no changes, just the Russians are attacking, uh, regular artillery duels without any progress, without losing the soldiers on the, on the ground and during the battlefields. A lot of updates are coming from Bakhmut. As you can see, this map has been updated. Uh, now the Russians are showing and they pr provided some kind of, of photo and video confirmation of the fact that the Wagner's forces managed to penetrate the Ukrainian defense orders and to enter residential area in the east part of Bakhmut. So this one, uh, the Russians didn't haven't took a lot, but anyway, two, three, four, four streets in this small area. This gray line shows the real progress of the Russians, shows that the Russians entered the town and now we can say that there is a real clashes inside of residential area of Bakhmut town because before that, you know, there weren't any clashes in the residential area because Oputna is the separate town in the south of Bakhmut, Ivangrad the same thing. Uh, if we're talking about east part of Bakhmut, this is completely a residential area, industrial zones without any um, without any residential towns, buildings in this area, build Podgorodny, some kind of suburbs of Bakhmut, but it's not a Bakhmut. So, um, so we can say that today is the first day when the Russians, according to official information we have, when the Russians enter the real Bakhmut, its uh, eastern residential area, and starting from today, we can say about the real clashes inside of this town. A little bit later we will discuss the real situation, we'll update the map, just understand the picture, the possible Russian movements and so on. If we are talking about the front line from Solidar to Severs, there are no changes in this area, as you can see, I believe that there are very heavy clashes, but uh, nobody achieved any progress or, or any success or any um, development of the bridgehead on this front line. Now we are moving to Kupiansk Liman front line. During the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost around 70 soldiers, something around 8 armored vehicles. And the most important is that the Ukrainians uh, haven't made any attempt of any counter-offensive or any offensive operation in this area. If we're talking about Kuziomovka, this area, no, no progress at all. Uh, just the front line are stable and uh, the only updates we receive from Liman front line and to be more precise about these three water reservoirs that located between let's say Nevska um, Makievka and Plashanka Chervanapopovka so these uh, these three lakes as you can see rivers or I don't know water reservoirs let's return to the western sources map so the main clashes in this area is along this line so along this, let's say, forest line or something like this. This is a very interesting, very important defense um, uh, barrier, we can say, that uh, it's some kind of barrier for artillery. The Ukrainians are not able to attack through this barrier because uh, like this barrier is the barrier, mm -hmm. and the Russians as well. So both sides tries to get this line, then to cross this line and to attack uh, uh, enemy's position. So the Russians from these positions try to attack Nevska. There are like bridges, there, is, like, there are like uh, towns where the Ukrainians have their positions. And from this area, the Russians try to attack in direction of Makievka. In the same situation from the Ukrainians. They tried to get here and to attack Plashanka. Uh, they tried to attack the Russian forces in this forest. So this like the middle line and both parties every day send their forces in this area and they attack. Uh, there is some kind of small battle, then everybody step back. So this is a real middle line in this area. And I believe that uh, for now nobody has progress and I believe that nobody wants to have something in this area because both sides have soldiers, both sides have manpower and resources. And for now the main goal for both sides is to reduce the military uh, possibilities of their enemy. 
Now return to Bakhmut and uh, let's discuss Bakhmut one more time. But before that, I believe that we need to update this map just to understand the current picture, current situation according to the Russian sources. First of all, uh, let's update the western part of this area. And according to the information we have, the Russians controls at least uh, they talk about that a lot, uh, this um, eastern residential area. Furthermore, today we got the first update about the fact that the Russians entered uh, this residential area that located on the east, and uh, as, as I understand, uh, the Russians controls something like this, uh, and or at least this morning, they established control over this area. So, as you can see, they, uh, it's very important to have this bridge. There is a local road that the Russians now are able to use to get to this um, main Piromaisky street. And after that, the Russians are able to move along the town. Furthermore, if we are talking about yesterday's progress, uh, there were updates that the Russians are storming this area and they established control over some um, south part of the same street. Uh, we have we had a lot of updates about the fact that the Russians got control over Ivan Grad. And this information we can find even on deployment map, and uh, the Russians control Opetne until the church. So the church we can say is the south corner of Bakhmut, and everything that is below this church, this one means that it's Opetne. And according to information we have, there are very heavy clashes in Opetne in this area and this part of Bakhmut or Oputna or like suburbs of Bakhmut is under Russian control. So this is the situation on the south and southeast of Bakhmut. These days we got a lot of updates and if we take a look at the Russian sources map, they are publishing this, that there are very heavy clashes in Podgorodne. Wagners are very active, they're acting very actively in this front line, trying to penetrate and to take control over this small village, over, over this residential area. So we can say, uh, I can't say that the Russians control or establish real control over this area, but anyway, this town is in the gray zone and we understand that this is the Russians' main area or main bridge had they want to take control over few days ago we got update that the russians managed to develop their bridgehead from this cross a little bit in direction of, of bakhmut and there were a few confirmation that they managed to take some kind of um, edge corner of this residential area so this is the pro movements of the russians this is the movements of the russians and uh, the most important one of course is that the russians got they entered this residential area and um, this uh, exactly this block is very important for many reasons if we return to the to this map of West russian sources map we're gonna see that there is a big street the central street this one central street that splits this town in two parts the north one and the south one uh, I'm talking about this uh, HN32 road as you can see this is street Patrick Lumumba street this one and um, this street perfectly split town in two parts and this operation um, in it, um, by attacking in this direction is very similar to the situation we saw in Mariupol during this storm operation in Mariupol. I will remind you a little bit. If you remember when the Russians were attacking from the west side, they were trying to move uh, along the M14 street with one purpose to split this town in two parts if we're talking exactly about this situation so this it's the same pattern and these days the russians wants to split bakhmut in two parts by moving along the n32 uh, street so they want to split and to force the ukrainians to step back and of course um, furthermore if you take a look at the russian sources map today we got a very important update from the north part of this uh, of this part of bakhmut i'm talking about this one street that uh, some forces, some brigades, um, Ukrainian brigades started evacuation process. So they decided to step back and we understand the, uh, this. Why? Because if the Russians are able to develop their offensive operation along these streets, uh, like this, like to develop this movement. In this case, the forces of Ukrainians who located in this area will be encircled. So the Ukrainians, the only thing they can do right now is two things: or to stop the Russians and push them and, and force them to step back. This the only this one option. And the second option, if the Ukrainians are not able to stop the Russian development in these along these streets, then they need to be like synchronized 
and they need to step back and to retreat from positions in these uh, suburbs or like located on the south from Podgorodnia in this area synchronously to this movement. So uh, they need to be every uh, second they need to be able to evacuate forces from this part of Bakhmut. Uh, if we're talking about Podgorodnia, yesterday we discussed that uh, Ukrainians, they destroyed this bridge with one purpose, and this is a very big flag, because uh, from one this perspective, the Ukrainians reduced their own logistic possibilities, but from another point of view, we understand that uh, some commander understood and decided to destroy the bridge, because it's a very high risk to lose this bridgehead, and the Russians will be able to start movement in direction of Slavansk. So, they understand that uh, that those days was the best day uh, like to destroy the bridge with one purpose to slow down the Russians and as we discussed yesterday because of the, that fact now the Russians needed need to uh, like to change their direction a little bit in direction of Krasnogora so this is like the first town the Russians need to take Podgorodnia and after Podgorodnia the Russians need to start development in direction of Krasnogora so if the Russians are able to take Krasnogora uh, it will be it will bring more problems to the Ukrainians that located in Solidar i'll explain to you why uh, because uh, let's update the Charlie Group front line as well. According to the Russian information we have, the Russians control Belogorovka, they are doing some kind of clearing operation in Yakovlevka. And according to some sources, to some information, uh, this blockout is under complete Russian control. And let's update, let's say, Podgorodin in the Krasnogora, uh, trying to show what kind, what what the Russians are able to achieve by attacking and movement in this direction. So, as you can see, according to this configuration, um, forces in Slidar will be, um, let's say, in operational encirclement or something like this, and it will be very difficult to protect this area. And if the Russians are able to take Podgorodnia and Krasnogora, I believe that forces in Solidar will be forced to step back and to retreat from this town, let's say to the north, and uh, create new defense line on the line from Bandarne, Vosikovki, uh, Sakov and Ivancetti, and Razdolovka. So they will be forced to step back to the north. And to tell the truth, I'm not sure what the Ukrainians are able to do with this small uh, um, pipeline between the road M03 and these defense lines. You know, there is like some water reserves, natural barriers that Ukrainians are able to use to like the second or third line of defense. But anyway, um, uh, this attack in direction of Krasnogor is very important and the Ukrainians understand this as well. Of course, from anyway, from even from this perspective, it's not an easy job to take Solidar, but the Russians will achieve, will have higher chances to do this by attacking in direction Krasnogora and by moving along the brushes in Yakovlevka and uh, to, by attacking the Ukrainians uh, from this area. So, the situation is very interesting. If we are talking about the south part, about Klishevka, about Ivanovska, about Dulivka, Bilogora, we haven't received any updates, just the Ukrainian military um, Ministry of Defense reported that the Russians were trying to attack like to cut Klishevka from Bakhmut, the Russians were trying to attack from Andreevka, but all those attacks were repulsed and for now there are no changes. If we are talking about, the, let's say, the um, some kind of, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, about Russian segment of internet, of course they are very excited. They are very excited because they understand that uh, these days, the next week, maybe in two weeks, we are going to see the culmination of the battle for Bakhmut. It's obviously that before the new year comes, we are going to see some kind of real progress from both sides. Or the Russians are able to break the situation and it will be just a question of time when they will clear this town and complete the battle for, battle for Bakhmut or they will be defeated and the Ukrainians will be able to start counter-offensive operation or something like this. Anyway, this year we are going to see the progress and the real um, real progress and by the end of this year we will understand exactly who is going to take control over this town for now for now i must say that the russians has initiative and they're pushing the ukrainians they have uh, a lot of losses their losses is very huge uh, they are forced to send more and more reserves and the most important thing that 
uh, the Russian, the Ukrainians are not okay with this situation because of the fact that they decided to move in time all their possible counteroffensive operation. They're not. They don't understand the Ukrainians if they are able to hold Bakhmut because if they were, um, if they knew that they are able to, were able to hold Bakhmut, of course these days they would start a massive counteroffensive operation. Let's say, in Svatova or in Zaporozhye, but because of the fact that they don't really understand if they are able to hold Bakhmut, they need to keep forces, they need to keep reserve in case if the Russians are able to penetrate, to collapse this front line, and they need forces to stop the Russians somewhere in the vicinity of Kramatorsk, Slavyansk, Chasofyar, or along the road M03. Uh, furthermore, today the uh, Western countries, Western military experts, reported Ukrainians as well that the Russian Federation continued deploying their forces uh, along the border of Belarus. Uh, they provided them more numbers about more convoys of tanks, of artillery systems and so on. To tell the truth, it's very interesting because uh, the Russians uh, have deployed a lot of forces on the border with Belarus and of course all those forces could be very useful somewhere in uh, on Kupiansk or Zaporozhye, uh, like to increase the pressure and so on. But the Russians decided to deploy these forces here. And if the Russians decide, let's say, to redeploy these forces from the south of Belarus, it will take maybe two or three weeks to redeploy these forces. So I believe that the Russians do have some plans on the north, at least the minimal plan, or minimal value that the Russians are able to achieve on the south of the territory of Belarus, is to pin down and to force the Ukrainians to have, to have a lot of reserves on the north of Ukraine. Just like to be ready if the Russians decide to attack, just to be on the safe side and to be able to stop the any offensive operation from the territory of Belarus. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.